All right, let's get started. Hello all, welcome to the webinar. My name is Chase Larson and I'm the Director of Marketing at TrueSona. Uh, today we'll be discussing some of the top considerations for supporting pass keys in your business, including an understanding of the benefits of pass keys, as well as their practical implementation in a digital service. Uh, before we get started, I want to go through a few uh, housekeeping items first. The webinar will be about 45 minutes and it'll be a hybrid of slides and discussion points. This will also include a Q&A at the end. With that said, please feel free to submit questions through Zoom at any time uh, during the presentation and we'll address them later at the end. Also, an on-demand version of this webinar will be available afterwards, so just stay tuned to your inbox and we'll send along an email as soon as it's ready. Uh, and now some brief introductions. Our three speakers today will be John Summers, Chief Technology Officer at TruSona, Rolf Lindemann, VP of Products at Knock Knock, and Andrew Shikyar, Executive Director and Chief Marketing Officer at the FIDO Alliance. Now, let's move on to the agenda. For the agenda, we'll first learn about how pass keys are rapidly reaching the mainstream from the FIDO Alliance. From there, we'll discuss the big business benefits of pass keys. Next, we'll talk about the core considerations for success and then conclude with how to get started on your own pass key journey. And after the presentation and discussions end, I'll provide some additional information and resources for those who'd like to learn more. Uh, and now I will turn the time over to Andrew to take it from here. Hey, Chase. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Um, happy to be here with Trusona and Knock Knock, uh, two of our FIDO Alliance members who are very much at the tip of the spear of innovation and passwordless authentication and, and really driving the industry forward to move beyond passwords in favor of FIDO authentication. Uh, so I want to open things up for a few minutes to talk about, set the stage and talk about FIDO Alliance and our view on passwordless authentication and FIDO therein. Um, you know, frankly, we could spend all 45 minutes today going through slide after slide that looks a lot like this. Um, the fact of the matter is um, passwords cause problems. Right? These data points you know, hit on the, the pains that come from data breaches, that come from remote attacks, um, that come from you know, various cyber attacks that, that are costing businesses and uh, businesses billions of dollars a year and consumers you know, all sorts of angst and, and, and lost money as well. Um, and it all comes back to passwords, right? And this is why FIDO was founded over 10, just about 10 years ago. Uh, it was really founded to attack the data breach problem, but understanding that passwords are at the root of the, the data breach problem means that by, attacks, by attacking the password problem, we're also standing to solve the data breach plague as well. But the fact of the matter is, as we move to the next slide, you know, passwords simply you know, are not fit for purpose for today's society, nor have they been. Right? We've been relying on this technology for close to 60 years now. And think about how many things do you use that are 60 years old? Do you drive a 60-year-old car? Or use a six-year-old laptop, which just isn't even fathomable, right? So technology is outdated, um, and we see this every day, right? They're clumsy, they're hard to remember, they're easy to fish, they're easy to, to manipulate and take out a user's hands. Um, and so we've known this for a bit, and it's so what we've seen are people layering on top of this, right? And so SMS and OTPs, for example, those certainly add security, right? Like legacy 2FA is better than a password alone, but the usability still wants, and the security is lacking. Right? It's just as easy for a remote attacker to fish your OTP as it is for them to fish your password. And so more and more, we're seeing SMS bypass attacks, both to consumers and businesses alike. And for consumers, like the advent of smishing, SMS phishing is causing all sorts of havoc and, and, and costing people lots of money and time. So simply put, you know, it, it's time, it's really past time for us as an industry to, to rethink authentication. Um, and we need to fundamentally, fundamentally move from the old way of doing things, which are you know, based on knowledge-based credentials, right? A password is a shared secret, right? KBA, when you're creating an account, is a shared secret. Anything that's kind of knowledge-based, any human-readable shared secret is fundamentally flawed and susceptible to phishing, susceptible to account takeovers and corruption. But what we've been facing for the past you know, several years are understanding that passwords aren't enough, but then coming up with Band-Aid solutions. Right, OTP, a band-aid solution. You know, all these different factors you're layer on top of the first factor speaks to the fact that the, fun, the, the first factor is fundamentally flawed. And so we need to move from this mindset of adding layers and band-aids on top of a flawed first factor to phishing resistant authentication, right? Based on a unfishable primary factor, moving away from passwords to things like pass keys. Um, you know, relying on user-initiated possession-based authentication that's cryptographically secure. 
right? What FIDO does basically is we introduce, we're not getting, or I'm not getting deep into tech, but FIDO has user-friendly asymmetric public key cryptography, which means that instead of relying on a shared secret on a server, it's possession-based where the user is authenticating locally to his or her device with a single gesture, verifying themselves there. And on the server, instead of a password, is a public key, which has no value, right? That whole model thwarts remote attackers in their steps. So we need to move from legacy fishbowl authentication to modern FIDO unfishable authentication. And you know we've been at this now for, like I said, for around 10 years. It's important to note that you know, FIDO's released several sets of specifications. FIDO authentication is very mature, right? So we've seen businesses relying on FIDO both for employee authentication, consumer authentication, and various form factors for several years now, right? Many of you might use you know, security keys to access your resources or as a second factor or primary factor for login. You might be using native apps for your banking app or telecom app, um, which is using FIDO credentials rather than just password reauthentication. This, this technology is mature. Um, but you know, around a year ago or so, we realized that for, tech, for FIDO to, to hit full scale, um, especially on the web, we need to tweak things a little bit to make it more usable and, and ready for uh, widespread adoption. And that's where we introduced passkeys. All right, so passkeys are kind of a fresh way of looking at uh, how WebAuthn and FIDO can be implemented uh, to allow the private key to be securely synced across, say, an operating system cloud. So whereas initially you had to enroll every device for every service, with passkeys, your, your key will be readily available to you on all your devices once you've you know, signed in, once you've enrolled once. Uh, so what passkeys are, passkeys are a lot of things. First of all, passkey is a term, a brand now that we're using uh, to describe any sort of passwordless FIDO sign-in. Right? We were lacking that as an industry before. People never would talk about FIDO or they'd say, you know, describe it different ways. You know, passkeys is, is a term again for any passwordless FIDO credential. Um, but ultimately it's also uh, a way to uh, allow consumers uh, to, to sign in passwordless across all their devices. It can also be bound to a single device, like such like, like in a FIDO security key, uh, but it really stands to revolutionize the way that people are deploying FIDO authentication at scale. So some of the benefits we're seeing with passkeys um, are in three key areas. You know, one's around user experience. Uh, first of all, it'll provide a more consistent user experience across all their devices. Um, you know, the way WebAuthn and FIDO has always worked is it's a single, single gesture authentication. Uh, but now this will be you know, codified further through you know, integration with operating systems with browsers and such. Um, so the user experience is much better. Additionally, if you think about the action of having to re-enroll every device for every service, it's somewhat counterintuitive to the way that people expect things to happen these days. Right? So more and more consumers are accustomed to password managers. Whether they know they're using one or not, they might be using iCloud Keychain or the browser form filler or, or Google Password Manager. They've come to expect that experience. Like if I go to a website I've been to before, my password should be autofill, right? So having to actually re-enroll in each device for FIDO authentication is counterintuitive and leads to bad user experience. Additionally, though, it leads to a security problem uh, in the sense that for me to re-enroll every device for every service, that means the relying party or the service provider has to have that password readily available for me to recover my account, right? And so in fact, FIDO's always had an account recovery challenge and Passkey has really helped to solve that by allowing for the account to be readily or the, the, the eliminates the need for account recovery since the, uh, the, the passkey or the private key is already readily available on that device. So in that sense, it also addresses the security problem, uh, but it also brings everything we know and love about FIDO authentication in the sense that, it, again, it's a uh, phishing resistant primary factor is unable to be socially engineered uh, for, by remote attackers. Then last but not least, scale. Right? So FIDO's mission, simply put, is to reduce the world's reliance on passwords. Right? So passkeys stand to take the vast majority of, uh, to address the vast majority of consumer use cases immediately and take passwords out of play for hundreds of millions of consumers over the next couple of years uh, by being a very scalable and deployment ready solution. Uh, more specifically, it eliminates the, the need for first time enrollment of passwords. And also again, the account recovery or the new device scenario um, Passkeys help address that pain point as well for consumers and businesses alike. It's worth noting that account recovery and password resets are not just a consumer inconvenience, it's a business threat, it's a security threat, and it's a business cost, whether you're, you're authenticating employees or your consumers. So we announced Passkeys around a year ago um, alongside 
uh, the three you know, core platform vendors in Fido Alliance. So with Apple, Google, and Microsoft, we jointly announced their commitment um, for supporting Passkey and their devices. We announced this last May, May 5th. Uh, by October, in October, Apple rolled out support in iOS, and they've rolled out since then support in Mac OS and, and iPad OS as well. Uh, Google more recently has uh, rolled out support for Passkey uh, deployment in uh, Chrome and Android. And Microsoft's adding you know, support in their operating systems as well over time. So you know, the fact that this is not only supported, but actually actively embraced by these platforms, we're not only supporting the technology, but also agreeing to uh, common iconography, common terminology, it really speaks to the industry-wide commitment that we have behind this very important initiative through FIDO Alliance and, and the passkey uh, the passkey concept. And with the support uh, comes adoption. Right? There's always kind of a network effect with any new technology put out there, but now that we have the endpoints you know, being addressed through the, uh, the active support in virtually every live mobile device today and more and more desktop computers as well, you see many leading brands starting to deploy passkeys. So I should be clear, these are you know, a sampling of companies supporting synced passkeys. Dozens, if not hundreds of other companies have deployed FIDO at scale already uh, using other, FIDO's other specifications. But you're seeing early adoption from e-commerce, payments, telecoms. And at the bottom here, very notable, you know, I list one password and dash lane. Um, these are companies that are A, using uh, enabling passkey sign-ins for their password managers, but also um, have announced commitment and plans to allow for passkey management along with password management in their credential management systems. So I think that's another you know, important thing to understand is that passkeys are not just a remit of you know, the three you know, big tech platform companies. Um, other people will be involved as well. And what that will do will create open innovation and competition and will allow for more rapid iteration of you know, around the edges of Passkey and, and FIDO based on industry feedback um, and market demand. So with that, uh, thank you so much for the time. Allow me to kick this off. I'm happy to turn things back over to Chase. Chase, thank you. Thanks, Andrew. That was a great Passkey primer. Uh, so now that we've heard about passkeys from Andrew, let's have a discussion with John and Rolf around the business benefits. And we're going to start with two key questions here. Number one, how does the customer experience improve with passkeys versus passwords? Rolf, why don't you start us off? Yeah, thank you for that. So I think it's very important to talk about terminology and iconography first. So customer experience typically is is um, gated by things which customers well understand. And if it deviates from that, they might get confused and, and drive off to something different. And from that perspective, the common terminology passkey now really helps because in the past people spoke about using your device to verify it's you or use fingerprints or facial recognition or touch ID, face ID, which are ecosystem specific. Now we have a common term, we have a common icon. So we can come to some some um, a very common way that is supported by the platforms on one, one hand side and the relying parties on the other hand, that makes it easy for users to understand what is going on to different degrees of detail. Because we learned that some customers really want explanation. They want to learn more. Other customers might just go with, oh yeah, Passkey looks good, right? Just using my biometrics, I know how that works and continue. And that, approach now has impact on many different lines. The, the first is new customer acquisition. If onboarding gets more simple, gets easier, we can, uh, can have a situation where people have make it easier to create accounts in the first place. And that typically has great benefits. And we will look into that in, in, in a little bit in more detail, right? Second, third party cookies will disappear. And as a result, more companies want to acquire more first party data and users using their accounts is a very good way to get to that data. The second one is increased revenue per customer. And so once the, the front door to your services, which really the authentication is, is more convenient, looks more inviting um, to the user, the users will use it more often and are more pleased to use it as opposed to frustrated potentially if uh, authentication doesn't work. And so with having more successful sign-ins, and there are numbers which really back that up, that passkey authentication typically is more successful than password-based or even OTP-based authentication, you get more 
user better user ratings and reduce transaction abandonment. And also, also on the cost side, you, you see that being reflected. So it's it in the end, it's a great benefit in, in general. So a good game changer here to offer something which is more delightful for user, easier to use, right? Compared to the password, a password and OTP world uh, today, which is complex because people don't know which OTP app to start, start or where the SMS is received if they don't have more mobile coverage, etc. And this really translates into a lot of tangible uh, business benefits and and more numbers. Yeah, that's a that's a perfect segue into the question number two: is how does that translate to these business benefits? And John, why don't you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, I'll reinforce some of the points that Rolf made for sure. It's you know pass keys. They improve the customer experience, fabulous. Most security technologies don't do that. And so that's a wonderful thing. But in terms of business benefits, it really delivers a trifecta of benefits for the business. As Rolf said, signups uh, and sign-ins are easier and faster and more successful. That means happier users that will spend more time, more money, more engagement with your site. It means lower attrition and abandonment. Uh, it means increased revenues for the business. It means higher retention of users, higher return rates for users, and ultimately higher long-term value for each customer, lifetime value for each customer. So that's great. It means lower costs for running the business because your account takeovers, uh, your account sharing, all of those will go down. You're now phishing resistant for the accounts that have shifted to pass keys. Getting that phishing resistance out there lowers the attack service for the business. First results in reduced fraud and fewer uh, analyses of, uh, of, of account takeover. So and then finally, there's all the benefits of eliminating passwords. You know, no more password resets, calls to the help center and help desk. So all of that is good. So it's that trifecta of benefits that really comes along with the improved customer experience. And in fact, let me walk you through um, one of our customers and some of the benefits they saw. So this particular customer is in the iGaming space. They run a platform where uh, games, betting games are played on top of it. Um, and they have been using um, SMS OTP, actually several second factors for authentication. As they approached past keys, their approach to it was, you know, this is something new. Let me try it as the second factor, as the very first thing that we do. They did that, they rolled it out, and then gathered data for a number of weeks post-deployment. And to surprisingly, pass keys immediately jumped up to being the most popular second factor service that they were using. And you see that listed to the right on the slide there. Uh, after 30 days, um, using pass keys as a second factor was more popular than SMS OTP, email OTP, or Google Authenticator. And at the same time, it was the only one that had 100% success rate, much better than any of the other second factor techniques. And it was faster as well. They followed up with a VIP, a, a survey of their users, and you know everybody loved it except for a couple who said, well, why am I not using this passkey thing for my primary authentication? Why are you just using it for secondary? So a lot of good business benefits there. And that's just one example. Let me hand it to Rolf to talk about an example for one of his customers. Thank you. And the second example is Intuit. It's really an early adopter of FIDO. They saw the strategic value of an industry standard protocol and has been reaping benefits of passwordless authentication, which we now call pass keys since a couple of years, right? So they didn't wait, they just got started. And they in fact use it as a, as a sole factor. So users can sign in with just a pass key as opposed to password plus an OTP or something else. And they confirmed the same things here, right? The authentication success rate really jumped up and the speed to sign in was really improving significantly. But there's also more, right? In the other product line, and TurboTax is, is one of those, and you might know that because no one wants to do taxes, but we all have to do our tax declarations. Um, they have implemented a different type to onboard users. As opposed to asking users for a new password when they sign up, they don't do that anymore. They just ask for an email address, the phone number, and then ask you to register a passkey. And with that, they could increase the 
onboarding success rate or the sign up conversion by 10%. And this is really a huge thing because if you are in that business, you typically know that just moving the needle by a single percent point is really hard to do. And now getting so many more um, benefits out of that was, was a great success for their deployment. On top of that, they could see a 50% reduction in onboarding time, which may, again is a nice business value because now customers are delighted as opposed to being frustrated before they even start the text declaration. They start with a nice experience and everything becomes easier for, for the user. And that, that has great business impact and also user satisfaction. Impact. And now they are eliminating passwords in even the in, in, uh, QuickBooks and other products um, um, that they have. And so overall, a phased approach in which they are really reaping the benefits of passwordless pass key based authentication uh, rolled out in phases across multiple of their product lines and seeing the success and tracking the success. Um, and, and that is really great. In addition, they also reduce the attack surface by elim eliminating the one time password and the other bearer token and all the challenges um, they had with that. And so with, with their strategic partner, they, they are now very satisfied and, and go forward and continue uh, to de deploy to even more products. Back to Chase. These are both great uh, real world examples. So we've gone into some of the what and the why now. Let's let's look at the how and what businesses should take into consideration with pass keys. Uh, so let's go to the first question. How do I successfully convert users from passwords to pass keys? Uh, Ralph, what do you think? So for me, I, I would like to first differentiate different user groups. We have new users compared to existing users, but also understand what kind of users and what your use case is. So when we look into those industries, we see two primary drivers here. Sometimes companies are driven by technology. Technologists love the new technologies. They want to play around with that. And other companies are looking more on uh, into value drivers uh, or having value drivers in mind, clearly identified business drivers and their use cases. And I think what we learned with our uh, existing deployments is really don't get caught up in the details of the protocols. There is some complexity here, but typically a partner will help you with those. Really focus on the business drivers and your use cases. And that helps you to also understand what you need to convert customers. The second topic really here is, or dimension, is if you look into the use case, what kind of, of classes of use case are you in, right? Are you in the e-commerce space where a single password is enough today, where you would just use a password as, um, as opposed to a password and, and you are done because user experience conversion is your primary driver, not security, versus if you are in a financial institution or if other regulated industry, Right? You typically have a slightly different view of the world. You have your regulations and you have another, I would say, even um, handle to, to influence users what to do, right? Or the, the level where users come from, the um, user experience level is a, a different one. Same with government agencies. So looking into that, right, um, I think it's, it's really important to understand how to move different users and there are different approaches. As I said, we have the new users, in which case giving them an option to not use a password in the first place has additional value, especially to improve the sign up conversion rate. And the second ones, if you if you convert existing users, giving them the option after, for example, password resets or other frustrating experiences to go on with something which is more convenient and avoid these frustrations in the future is typically a very good way um, to help them with that. John, what are the challenges I need to consider with passkeys? Well, you know, Ralph mentioned a few. I, I, the, the big one is, you know, make it easy to adopt passkeys. Look, these things, they're, they're better for your users. They're better for your business. And so, you know, the faster you can get users shifting away from passwords into using passkeys, the, the faster those benefits will accrue to the, both the users and to the business. But still, Passwords are not going away for a while. So both sign-in approaches, passwords and passkeys are going to need to coexist for years to come. 
And the users that will be coming to your website, to your applications, they're likely to have a mix of devices. Many of them, the vast majority, will support passkeys, but some are not going to be able to. And so you've got to have, you will have to successfully with those. So when you design your user sign-in journeys, as you evolve to using passkeys, you'll have to redesign your user journeys to incorporate passkey journeys. And you're going to need to support sign-ins for both passkey, passwords and passkeys that depend on the device and the browser that's being used. And if you don't do that properly, users can wind up in sort of dead ends where they don't understand what's going on, where they're confused because their device can't support the particular modality uh, that they've been uh, driven down. So, you know, it, it, it's important to really think through the user journeys and really focus on making this easy for users to adopt. That way your business will get the most benefit. That's the thing, that's the biggest challenge I think I would advise people to think through. Yeah, and maybe... One, one more comment, if I may chime in here, one more comment on mental load that users don't want, right? So if you want user adoption, you typically want to reduce the mental load the users have. And there's interesting research on misconceptions users have, and there's interesting research on effect of impact of mental load users have. Mental load today means if I have to come up with a password, right, how to generate, uh, can I generate a password that is even uh, is, is first e um, easy for me to remember and second strong enough and meeting all the security requirements. This is a mental load I have to go through, right? This is reduced by just requiring a pass key. On the other hand, with passwords, I have learned that passwords are stored on a server and hopefully encrypted, right? In the pass key world, this concern doesn't apply anymore because this is naturally baked in designed into the technology, right? The storage location, right? Additionally, the biometric, right? Stored on the device and not sent to the server. Those things are designed in the protocol in the right way, but not, not necessarily clear to the users. So some users might have concerns. So designing the user experience such that the, the, you, you can talk about those openly and say your biometric will stay safe, et cetera, helps driving more adoption more quickly. So that, we spoke a little bit about this. So how do you manage legacy and modern approaches? Your passwords, pass keys, uh, kind of fill that out a bit. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, I, I advise uh, customers, brands to, you know, take a strategic approach as they think about their business evolution away from passwords and towards pass keys, towards this next generation of authentication. And that they need to create that plan. Now, it's just a short-term plan because, yes, you have to do sort of your step one. But as you're thinking about the overall journey, um, take a big picture approach and think through, you know, which sign-in approach do you want to emphasize for your end users? Do you want to give them a choice between using passwords and or pass keys? Or if the device is pass key capable, do you want to just put them right into a pass key flow and not give them a specific choice to use a password unless they request it. So that, that's one thing to be thought through. Um, if, your if your site's currently using social login with Google or Apple, for example, will you continue to do that? Um, if you do, will you register a pass key right after the social login is completed? So now you can begin to shift those users, migrate those users over to the new world of pass keys. Um, and as Rolf, the point, one of the points Rolf was making was, do you even want to keep creating accounts with passwords? Creating an account with a pass key is a tap and go experience. It's much easier. It's a lower cognitive load, as Rolf said. Um, you know, one of the brands that we've interacted with is focused exactly on that account creation process. They have um, their, their first uh, business objective is to improve their conversion rate, the account creation conversion rate, so a greater percentage of users that start the account creation process get through. So they're really focused on that sign up experience and focus there, and they're gonna focus on the sign in experience later. So that's a strategic consideration you should think through. Um, and then will you migrate, migrate your mobile app to using pass keys as well? so that you can using it across both sites, websites, as well as your mobile apps. There's, there's, so building that more strategic strategic plan to think through some of those key issues in the journey over time is one of the one of the pieces of counsel I have for brands. 
Back to you, Jim. And, and maybe one more cons consideration from the security side. So what we often hear is, again, e-commerce vendors, for them, security is not the primary driver. User convenience is. For regulated industries, it's typically the opposite way, right? Regulatory compliance is, is key, and they have to avoid, um, follow the, the, the regulations in, in, in their region. Now, those industries are typically re regulated to implement a very strong device binding, which they in some way don't get with a syn synchronizable pass key. So they want to augment the pass key with something which gives them strong device binding. Those technologies exist, for example, the DPK, DPK on Android devices, but they also um, exist in, in other FIDO technologies. So you can use other FIDO authenticators. There's other FIDO protocols which give you that um, a very unique device bind. You can add those things in addition, which is not visible to the user, but helps you to meet all your regulatory requirements. So this is a, a good situation for you, right? To use the pass key um, to make everything easier, more convenient to users, but still add something on, on top of that just behind the scenes to get the strong device binding in addition. Great. Rolf, you mentioned uh, earlier, thinking through and designing a passkey journey. What does a passkey journey look like? So what we have seen is that most companies really want to start with a business driver, may, meaning setting a strategic direction, right? So not starting with, oh, let's play with some technology and see what we can do typically very tactical and doesn't give you the, the full benefits. But understanding all the, the value you can get off, out of that is a very good start, starting point. The second thing typically means aligning stakeholders. And part of the stakeholders are the security departments in your organization, right? It's also the user experience people which need to get on board, right? It has an impact on the user experience. You're replacing or augmenting a password with something else. Now you have to think it through. You have to understand what that means. You want to get the product management, the product owners on board because they really get the benefit out of that. And of course the engineers, they need to implement and need to be happy with that. But then start prioritizing the use cases. Right? There's different use cases you want, might, might want to uh, uh, prioritize right? and just make sure you can get started. You don't start too big, then it that gets a never ending story and you never get, uh, can deploy it. You want to start re relatively early with the first use case to understand what it really means under to your business and your customer, your target customers to understand how you implement that and and how to tweak or handle the additional use cases. Yeah, I completely agree with Rolf right there. I mean, you've got to pick your use, your first use case carefully. Pick one that has the potential for a quick and clear benefit to the business. You build a clear business case for what's expected and what's outside the project scope. And that allows you to show success and build momentum for the larger projects in the later phases of your journey. And, and as Rolf said, you know, spend the time to get the user journeys right, including UX testing. If, if the customer experience is poor, users not gonna adopt and the business benefits won't appear. So it, as you really do need to get your user experience team involved early on. And if you don't have the user experience talent that you need, you know, go find that skill set out there in the marketplace because that will really help you get get those new journeys defined in a manner that's pleasing, good customer experience, and then all those security and business benefit outcomes will accrue to your business. And maybe one more addition here. What we have seen, whenever there's something new, if you try to do that the first time on your own, right, the risk that you fail and have a longer, slower learning cycle is very high. Use partners which have done that a couple of times. They have learned what is important to make it a successful thing, right? Doing it jointly together with partners typically ma makes it much quicker and a, a much safer journey for you, right? Which, which must much higher likelihood to succeed. All right, thank you, John and Rolf, for that really helpful discussion. Next, we'll answer some questions. And again, feel free to ask any last, last questions via Zoom as we go through these. We'll be answering them all live. Um, let's start. Uh, first off, uh, this question was asked, uh, Andrew, during your presentation. So I'll, I'll address this to you. 
Uh, am I right in understanding that pass keys as described here in this presentation are not suitable for highly regulated bodies such as financial financial institutions and enterprise pass keys are needed for these organizations instead? Uh, I, would, I would disagree with that. Um, so I think that what a lot of enterprises or, or um, kind of highly regulated scenarios are looking at are ways, you know, if, if you need to have, like Ralph was talking about before, like that device binding, there's other ways to achieve that. Right, so the sync key does not achieve that, um, but you could certainly do a couple of things. One, yeah, you can use device bound pass keys, right? Or I think that's what you're referring to as enterprise pass keys. Um, so that's one way of going up, but using a security key, just as you've been using security keys for years, or there's other ways to, um, you know, do device binding or, or add a added layer on top of that primary pass key factor. But it's certainly, uh, just to be clear, you know, pass keys are ready for the enterprise um for for employee authentication and, and we have you know one nice thing about fido alliance we're seeing great collaboration here today between trusona and knock knock in our working bodies in our working groups you know, everyone's deeply committed to seeing pass keys through and fido through but we have an enterprise deployment working group where people talk about these scenarios yeah. um, and exactly this question and we're working on a series of papers that we'll be publishing in the next couple of months talking about how to deploy pass keys in the enterprise and you know, how to address some of these concerns that, that some may have uh, that come with a synced, uh, synced pass key. Yeah, there are some great papers in process. And so I encourage the audience to, you know, look at, at FidoAlliance.org and watch for those things as they come out over the next several months. They'll be great. But look, pass keys are better than passwords. Full stop. If all you did as an enterprise was to replace your passwords with pass keys, that phishing resistance that accrues to your account is going to dramatically improve uh, it's reducing your attack surface and, and reducing your exposure to those attacks. Do you still have to do additional things over and above pass keys? Sure, but you do that today with passwords anyway. So it, it's there are more than pass keys that are needed, but it just adopting pass keys is a huge big step forward for everybody. And that's why we're all so excited about the, the rollout. And, and remember, pass keys are not a single technology. It's rather a class of technologies. So synchronizable pass keys or sync pass keys on one hand side, device bound pass keys on the other hand side. The, 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 the second piece, the device bound pass keys might be what regulators industries are looking for today. Those things are also called pass keys. Uh, they are also possible uh, to implement. Sticking with a, a bit of an industry theme here, the next question, which verticals or industries are good candidates for pass keys? Well, as we just said, the short answer is all of them. Like <laughs> pass keys are better than passwords. Uh, phishing's a problem across all industries. And if a digital business adopts them, that helps. Uh, that being said, the early adopter industries, uh, as you saw in the logo slide from Andrew, are those that need both high security and very low friction and for whom fraud costs are, are damaging. Uh, industries such as the online travel agencies, uh, fintech, um, uh, the gaming uh, and sports betting uh, companies that I, that I mentioned in my example. Those are just some examples of industries. And what we have seen, and that's the other aspect here, is that e-commerce vendors, for example, right, which simply use passwords today, could not be addressed with FIDO technology in the past. Now with synchronizable pass keys, they can be addressed. So the new thing here is that a new market segment, the e-commerce vendors can be addressed. And this is very interesting. And that is where we see a lot of activity and demand from the market as well. The existing industries like financial institutions and governments and mobile network operators, they still can be addressed there are solutions for that uh, from various vendors. Um, and um, so for them, pass keys are still a very good solution and they just will benefit from the broad acceptance in the market of, of pass keys. Next question here. Uh, what happens in the transition between now and full adoption of pass keys? If passwords are still there for accounts with pass keys, could that not be a backdoor hack, so to speak, given that pass keys are designed to work on their own without additional security methods? Let me start so, and then turn over to yeah. just one, one thought on this is that it actually, you know, we're, we're in the midst of doing about a, a, lot, a bunch of UX testing and, and, and such. Um, and John and Ralph probably speak to this as well, but um, I think there, there will be a transition period. 
you know, people don't necessarily feel comfortable getting rid of their passwords. So I think, you know, the real goal here in my view in the next couple of years is to, you know, start to take the, put the password in the background. All right, so use it less and less, make it less and less re, you know, re, required and, and relied upon, um, such that eventually you, you can you know get rid of it altogether. And we've seen some customers and some companies actually allow you know get rid of passwords altogether. So I think they're, they they will take some time. I I don't think it you know it creates an added backdoor. It's not a net new backdoor. Um, it brings the same risk as passwords, which is why you want to get rid of them. Um, but again, pass keys on their own you know, send a very powerful signal um, to the relying party. So if all of us, if you're relying on that pass key, you're looking for that pass key, and then you see a password sign in, that could also feed into your risk engine, you know, and, and flag that uh, as a potentially fraudulent uh, sign in. And very important for the risk engine, since if you add pass keys as an alternative to passwords, most transactions will be done through pass keys that reduces the number of potentially risky password transactions. So you can focus your energy on the few risky transactions where people actually have used the password before you finally at some point um, switch off the passwords uh, entirely. Right, it improves the signal to noise ratio for that risk signal uh, because passwords are used so much less. So um, it, it's still gonna be years before passwords go away. But to Andrew's point, the less they're presented to the internet, the better. Okay. And next question here, what happens if devices are lost and are using device bound pass keys? Is that device bound pass key, not multi-device, unrecoverable? So if you have a device bound pass key and the device is lost, you have to establish another device bound pass key with a new device. Right, so you will likely want to tell your relying party that that device was lost, so they will lock it out, right? which is a security thing you have. And that is exactly the same experience as moving over to a new smartphone when you have a bank right? or a new phone number if you use SMS OTP. So the process in general is not new, but that's the same, right? because if it's device bound, that is exactly what you want. If you do not want that device bound characteristics, just use the synced pass key. Right. All the banks today have account recovery processes for initializing a brand new device or a, a, getting back into your account after a lost device. Those processes won't change. Okay, we're getting close to time here. Last one more question. Uh, I think simply put, how ready are pass keys for prime time? Maybe we'll get- Well, I mean, as Andrew said, they're ready to be used at scale today. And in fact, Companies have been using FIDO credentials at scale, millions of end users, tens of millions of end users for years now. So, so that's absolutely true. The browser and OS support on mobile devices is ubiquitous, maybe not 100%, but pretty darn close. Um, the support on desktop devices is a little lower. So those are some you know, areas you have to account for. Windows 10 and 11 support uh, pass keys, absolutely. But you've got to get Windows Hello enabled and Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. So um, when you implement pass keys, they can be used with most of the devices that are out there, but not all of them. So your implementation needs to take into account and gracefully handle all of the you know, corner cases for those devices that can't, that aren't rip pass key capable at this time. If you design your user journeys to, to deal with that, it's it, you're ready to go. And to the point that Rolf was making about the syncable pass keys being such a great fit for consumer ex experiences, consumer brands can really benefit from pass keys at this time. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with John wholeheartedly, of course. Um, but I would also note that it is you know, relatively you know, new in market. I mean, sync, sp speaking specific of, uh, specifically to sync pass keys, it's, it is a newer concept. Um, and like I said before, it will iterate, right? So. There's no doubt where we're going to get to, which is you know super usable, super ubiquitous, you know, uh, you know passkey signings instead of passwords, um, and they are ready today, but they will improve further, right? So I think that you know, part of any new technology is getting market feedback, seeing market response, uh, addressing um, any you know smoothing out any rough edges that may emerge, um, and that is actively happening. Right? Again, the, the the level of commitment behind this is on parallel. And okay, maybe so, one so more comment to, to, to always improve. Probably. Sorry, maybe one more comment to that. If you implement support for pass keys today, 
you will be able to support the new syncable pass keys for the remaining platforms once they add support for that. So it is not that you have to rip out the technology and put another technology in. It's just you will be ready. You can start with the ecosystems where pass keys are supported, syncable pass keys are supported. They they are supported in in the device bound in, or uh, in device bound way, but the syncable ones. Right, the technology on the server side, if you implement it, will support them all. That makes it easy to start deploying now. Okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, conclude here. Thank you again to all of our speakers uh, and to the attendees for your attention and questions. Uh, before we go, for more information, uh, if you'd like to learn more about Knock Knock, please visit knockknock.com. Uh, or Trusona, go to trusona.com slash passkeys, uh, where we currently uh, you can access the passkey resource center um, to continue your, your, your learning as well. So uh, again, thank you everyone. We hope you have a great day. Uh, if you have questions didn't get answered or you have additional questions, feel free to reach out um, and we'll talk to you soon.